Meet Yannick Sinner. You've probably heard of him. Or have you not? Well, Yannick Sinner is an Italian tennis player who is currently looking like the real deal. The young Italian has been on the lips of everyone ever since he became the highest ranked Italian at just the age of 20. From world number one Novak Djokovic, who called the Italian a top talent, to Roger Federer's coach Ivan Ljubicic, who described Sinner as a pure talent, Yannick is for sure not short of fans. So, who is Yannick Sinner? As of April 2023, Yannick is the number 8th ranked player in the world and has won 21 out of his 26 matches played so far this season before the start of the Monte Carlo Masters in April of 2023. In 2019, Sinner became the first person born in 2001 to reach a challenger final before eventually going on to win the ATP singles in 2019. The following year, Yannick would showcase his best performance yet at a top level by reaching the quarterfinals of the 2020 French Open while defeating Alexander Zverev on the way. Now, you might be thinking that this young kid got here because he was probably born a prodigy like the Williams sisters or Roger Federer. But what if I told you that Yannick Sinner only started training to be a tennis player just eight years ago? This is the story of how a young boy from Northern Italy, against all odds, rose to become one of the best players in tennis with only eight years of practice and experience. It is a story of how hard work, determination, and commitment can take you within touching distance of your dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, Yannick Sinner. Born on August 16, 2001 in San Candido, a small city in northern Italy, Yannick Sinner is in many ways the last person you'd expect to have a tennis career. That's because when you grow up in northern Italy like Yannick did, you would most definitely turn out to be a skier, whether professionally or just for fun. And in Yannick's case, it was no different. In fact, the chances of him becoming a skier were higher than normal, especially because his mom, Siklinda, worked as a waitress at a skiing lodge, which meant that Yannick was literally surrounded by skiers growing up. So it was no surprise when Yannick started skiing at the young age of three. What makes Yannick's rise to the top even more fascinating is that he wasn't just skiing for fun. Yannick was actually really good at it. So good, in fact, that he was the best junior skier at the young age of eight. And by the time he was nine, his coach and parents were confident he could participate and win the national championship in giant slalom. A few months later, Yannick would return his parents' faith by indeed winning the national championship. Yannick's victory that day seemed like the making of a future Olympic gold medalist in skiing. But Yannick wasn't just good at skiing. The young Italian was such a natural athlete that he could do other sports and still beat the majority of his peers at them. However, after participating and winning a national championship, everyone expected Yannick would continue his skiing career. But Yannick did not. When he turned 13, he decided to ditch his skis and pick up a tennis racket instead. Speaking on this decision later in life, Yannick had this to say, I chose tennis because I enjoy playing, whereas skiing is a short activity where even a single mistake can end the whole run. In tennis, you can still make some errors and win. This single choice would change Yannick's life forever. However, there was one problem. Tennis is vastly different from skiing and a completely different ball game. Most of the top professionals in the world, like Novak Djokovic, Serena Williams, Roger Federer, they picked up the racket as early as when they were three to five years old. Andre Agassi, for example, was given a racket by his dad when he was barely six months old. The main reason for this is usually because starting early allows these athletes to build a good understanding of the game, as well as in the development of their muscles and overall fitness. And with Yannick only playing tennis once or twice a week before choosing to play the game full time, it seemed like a recipe for disaster. Because how did he intend to catch up to the kids that had been playing the game for seven to eight years ahead of him? Instead of giving up, Yannick, with the help of his dad, worked his ass off to get in shape and learned all the basics of tennis all over again. Yannick's determination and hard work would eventually pay off when he was discovered by Riccardo Piatti, the Italian coach responsible for coaching the current number one player in the world, Novak Djokovic. The only problem was that Piatti was only willing to train Yannick if he left his hometown in Sesto to come train at his training facility many miles away. This was a tough decision for a 13-year-old kid, but it was a necessary decision. 
And so, Yannick packed his bags, left his skiing career, his parents, and his friends to start a new chapter in his life. However, making hard decisions was only just starting for Yannick. You see, most of the best tennis players like Djokovic, Nadal, and all the other top tennis players that you can think of usually begin their journey to turning pro by practicing in many junior tournaments. It's in these junior tournaments that these players establish themselves as some of the best talents in the country by competing and beating their peers and winning junior tournaments. But rather than doing that, Yannick opted for a different route. The teenager made the decision to stay away from junior tournaments, including never entering any junior slams, and instead chose to focus on getting his game together by playing ITF Futures events. The reason for this decision was that, at the time, Sinner did not have the talent to play at a high level. Sinner and his coach believed that it was better that he played with the juniors with hopes that, if Yannick had the talent, he would slowly rise through the ranks. And that's exactly what he did. But this was not without a few difficulties. You see, even if Yannick was not playing junior tournaments with players far better than him, that doesn't mean ITF was very easy either. At least not for Yannick. And that's because most of the people the young Italian played against had far more experience than he did. Despite all of this, Yannick refused to give up. His resilience would eventually pay off when the Italian star earned his first main draw and achieved a ranking of 1,583rd, along with the prize money of $154. Now, you're probably thinking, that's not much of a big deal, which is, in fact, right. However, this would become the starting point of a career that would take the tennis world by storm. After Yannick got his first ATP ranking on the 8th of February 2018, the bright Italian worked his way from rank number 1,583rd to number 762nd, all within just eight months. At this point, things began to look really good for Yannick. In February of 2019, barely a year after Yannick got his first ranking, the young Italian would make history twice that month by becoming the youngest person in tennis history to reach a challenger final, as well as the youngest Italian to win a challenger title. To put that into context, tennis legend Roger Federer won his first professional title on the 31st of October, 1999, 110 weeks into his ranking journey. Yannick won his first title only 54 weeks into his ranking journey. But Yannick was only beginning, and his status as one of the most promising talents in tennis immediately began to soar. The young Italian won his first ITF Futures title a week later in Trento, Italy, further cementing his place as one of the most exciting talents in the world. After winning his first two ITF Futures titles, Yannick was allowed to compete in his first ATP tournament as a wild card. Competing in the next generation ATP tournament as a wild card is a big statement in tennis. This tournament is a prestigious, high profile event where the best tennis players in the world, aged 21 years and younger, are given the chance to compete against each other for the grand prize of $250,000 and the title of next generation champion. Everyone competing in this tournament had been playing since they could speak and were the best of the best. These were players who had participated in junior tournaments that Yannick had avoided, with some of them winning multiple titles along the way. Most of these players were also ranked in the top 100 players in the world. But when the tournament began, Yannick shocked everyone. Round after round, set after set, Yannick dispatched these so-called best young players in the world like he had been doing it his whole life. Not only did he look like he belonged on the big stage, but he was also dispatching players who many thought were way better than him. On November 9th, 2019, the world 95th ranked Yannick Sinner defeated the then 18th ranked player in the world, De Minor, 4-2, 4-1, 4-2 to win the next gen title, becoming the youngest Italian to win an ATP title. Yannick was out of words, out of breath, and out of belief. What he had done was impossible, and yet he had made it possible. With that, Yannick formally announced himself to the world as not only one of the most exciting young players in the world, but one of the world's best. With such an impressive performance, Yannick began attracting stars. Everyone wanted to know who this kid that just took the world by storm was. Even Federer couldn't help but talk about how good he was. When Yannick made it to the US Open that same month, nobody saw it coming. 
Yannick would pull another major surprise by qualifying for his first Grand Slam tournament. Although he would eventually end up losing to Stan Varinka, Yannick had achieved more things than most young aspiring tennis players could only dream of. In 2020, Yannick continued his impressive trajectory to the top by winning his first Grand Slam match at the Australian Open, a victory that earned the Italian his first top 10 victory at the Rotterdam Open. Unfortunately for Yannick, the 2020 tennis season was put on hold due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But after the break, Yannick came back strong in Europe. He defeated some high-ranked players like Stefanos Tsitsipas and Alexander Zverev and made it to the quarterfinals of the 2020 French Open, where he ended up losing to Rafael Nadal. But Yannick didn't let that stop him. Yannick doubled his efforts and wrapped up the year by winning the Sofia Open defeating Alex de Menor and Vasek Pospisil in the process. This victory made him the youngest Italian tour-level champion ever, and the youngest player to win an ATP title since Kei Nishikori in 2008. At the end of the year, Sinner was ranked world number 37. He started the next year by winning his second ATP title at the Great Ocean Road Open, and after successfully defending his Sofia Open title, Sinner became the youngest man to win five ATP titles since 19-year-old Novak Djokovic at the 2021 European Open. And with that, Yannick Sinner broke into the top 10 rank in the world. It's hard to believe that just a few years ago, Yannick Sinner was nothing but a clueless 13-year-old trying to figure out his place in the tennis world. But now, he's a top 10 player in the entire world. In the end, Yannick Sinner is proof that with hard work and dedication, there's nothing you cannot achieve, no matter how crazy it sounds. So there you have it, guys. What about Yannick Sinner's impressive rise to fame impressed you the most? How much longer till he reaches number one? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to learn more interesting things about your favorite tennis players.